بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام or where we strive to be in the company of the noble angels by perfecting our recitation of the Quran by learning the art and the science of Tajweed Now we mentioned in our very first episode that we are going to follow the rules of the Khira'ah of Hafs an Asim and we didn't really explain what is Hafs an Asim and what is this thing called Qira'ah and very briefly uh, the Qira'ah is a particular way of reciting the Quran and it is named after the Qari who became famous with that particular methodology so the methodology that we're reciting is that of Hafs an Asim and Hafs is the student of Asim. Asim, his full name was Asim ibn Abi Nujud, and he died in the year 170 Hijrah. Uh, Hafs was his student and who learned from him, and his full name was Hafs ibn Sulaiman uh, al Kufi al Asadi. And Hafs was also the stepson of Asim. Now, what are all of these qiraat? Well, there are 10 qiraat, there are 10 ways of reciting the Quran, and all of them go back to the Prophet. ﷺ. This is because the Quran was revealed in many different ahruf, is the Arabic wording that is used. The ahruf of the Quran were based upon the various linguistic differences amongst the Arabs. Each tribe had a particular way of speaking Arabic. Just like in our times, the English in America is different than the English in Australia, which is different than the English in England. There are slight differences between the way we pronounce letters, the way we spell them, so on and so forth. Similarly, the Arabs at the time of the Prophet wasallam, they too differed slightly in this regard. So in order to facilitate the memorization of the Quran amongst different tribes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually revealed the Quran in seven different ahruf, if you like, seven dialects or uh, seven different ways of uh, reciting the Quran. These ways were preserved by the companions and passed down from generation to generation until they reached uh, the famous Qurra, the famous uh, people that are, they are named after, and so they became famous for them. These Qurra are not the originators of the Qiraat. This is a very common misconception. They weren't the ones who sat down and invented it. No, all of it goes back to the Prophet ﷺ. It's just that these particular people became famous for that particular way. So uh, the, the particular qira'ah was named after them. And we said that there are 10 authentic uh, qira'at of this nature. Hafsa and Asim is only one of them. And the other m- uh, common one that is found in the Muslim world is that of Warsh. Warsh and Nafi. This is found in some parts of Algeria and some parts of Morocco. And there's other qira'at that uh, are found in small pockets of the Muslim Ummah. But as a whole, the 10 qira'at are only studied in specialized institutions where the, the entire purpose, the entire syllabus is structured around memorizing these uh, qira'at. With this interesting uh, introduction, let us now return to the rules of Hafs and Asim. And let me mention here that Alhamdulillah, the good news is that we have covered pretty much all the basic rules of Tajweed. We have covered pretty much all the basic rules of Tajweed. All that is left is a few, if you like, uh, trivial things at the end, the advanced studies at the end, and this is what we'll do in the remaining few episodes, and we'll also, inshallah, in a future episode, uh, bring a professional qari, a real qari, to recite to us the Quran, and we will try to break down and analyze every single rule of tajweed in his recitation, so make sure you tune in uh, to those shows as well. What is remaining uh, are basically some exceptions. We've studied the general rules of tajweed. Now there are certain exceptions of those rules. And the good news is that they are very few in number. They are very few in number. You just memorize them, you know that they're there, and you move on. So today we'll discuss a number of exceptions. Firstly, we're going to discuss something known as the sakta. Okay? The sakta means that you pause momentarily without taking any breath. This occurs in four places in the Qur'an. Where you're supposed to, again this is not obligatory, but it's something to perfect the art of recitation. If you don't do it, you're not sinful. But it is something which to perfect the art of recitation, you should do. So what you do is you pause momentarily without taking any breath. And this occurs in four places in the Qur'an. The first is in Surah Kahf, uh, the end of verse 1. Uh, let us look it up in Surah Kahf, the end of verse 1. Okay, Surah Kahf is verse number or Surah number 18. And in fact, you will find, if you look at the Qur'an, you will find a small scene at the top of the end of the verse. What is this scene? This scene is to tell you that there is a sakta. 
Okay, there is a sakta. Now, you have two options here. As I said, a sakta is not obligatory. If you wanted to stop at the end of a verse and then move on, you are not sinful for doing so. But what is preferred, what is preferred is that you do a sakta, which means you stop and you don't breathe. You don't breathe in or out. You don't take any extra breath, breath and then you move on. Let me uh, demonstrate that now. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا Go on. So I said عوجا قيما I stopped. I didn't breathe in or out. I momentarily stopped and then I moved on. This is what is known as a sakta. Let's look at the second place where it uh, occurs. The second place is Surah Yasin, verse 52. Surah Yasin, the famous surah that, alhamdulillah, many Muslims have memorized. Yasin is surah number 36, verse number 52. Qalu ya waylana man ba'athana min marqadina هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَصَدَقَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ Notice the marqadina, there is a sakta here. Once again, though, if you wanted to stop, you're not sinful to stop, breathe and move on. But to be better, to perfect the rules of tajweed, it is better to have a sakta. مَرْقَدِنَا هَذَا you, pr- you stop and you don't breathe and then you move on. The fourth place where it occurs is Surah Qiyamah, verse 27. Okay. Move to uh, Surah Qiyamah. Surah Al Qiyamah obviously is in which juz? Which juz? The 29th juz. Okay. Surah Al Qiyamah, we have verse number 27. Uh, let me start reading from 26. Kalla iza balagati taraqiya wa qila man raqa. Notice here, now here you can really see what a sakta does. وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ Suppose I had not done a sakta, what would have happened here? We have a noon second followed by a ra. Assimilation. It would have been assimilation, merging without ghunna. وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ But because I stopped, because I put a sakta, وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ So there's a sakta, so you hear the noon, therefore it becomes like an idhar. And the final uh, place where the sakta occurs is Surah Al Mutaffifin. Surah Al Mutaffifin, as we know, is in the final juz, in verse number 14. If you turn there, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. Look how I did. Kalla bal rana. Kalla bal rana. You stop after the bal. Had we not stopped, what would have happened? Barrana. We would have had idgham because the two letters are of a close makhraj. Okay? So that seems pretty clear, the sakta. Let us move on to the next ruling now. The next ruling is that of the madd sila exceptions. There are exceptions of the madd sila Okay? So a madd sila we studied the rulings before of the madd sila What is the ruling? Is that when there is a silent letter before or after, there is no madd. Yes. Yeah, and when there is a Hamza after and a letter that is moving before, you prolong it. And when there is no Hamza, then you make it two harakas. So there are some exceptions here. Let us turn to Surah Al Zumur. Okay, Surah Al Zumur is Surah number 39 in the Quran. Jazakallah. Number 7. Here we have. وَلَا وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ From the beginning, إِن تَكْفُرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَنْكُمْ وَلَا يَرْضَ لِعِبَادِ الْكُفْرِ وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ Okay, notice here the ha. What would be the general ruling of the ha? Who can tell me? Uh, two harakas. The two harakas, right? Why? Uh, preceded and preceded and followed by, by haraka. So it's preceded by a haraka and followed by a haraka. Mm-hmm. But in this particular case, we don't do any type of mad. So we say, We don't say, 
Okay, why? Because the Prophet ﷺ did so. We don't have any reason, it's just the exception to the rule. وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ We don't do a mad over here. So this is an exception. We do not do a mad where technically, generally, there would have been a mad. The next exception uh, with regards to the mad sila is Surah Al Furqan, verse 69. Surah Al Furqan is verse 25 in the Quran. Surah number 25 in the Quran. Turn back a little bit. Surah number 25, verse number 69. Okay, you found it? Okay. Verse number 69, Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُضَاعَفُ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ فِيهِ muhana. Notice here the fihi. The general rule would be what in this particular word? There is no mud. No Why? Preceded by silent. Because it's preceded by a silent letter. But in this case, there is a mud. It's an exception. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ recited this. We don't know the reason. We just follow what the Prophet ﷺ did. In this particular verse, he did recite a mad, so therefore we recite it as well. So the way you recite this is يُضَاعَفُ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا فِيهِ مُهَانًا Typically you would say فِيهِ مُهَانًا But not in this verse. It's an exception. Fihi muhana, you prolong it to two okay. harakas, okay? So these are the only two exceptions of the madd sila. Zumar verse 7, you're supposed to do a madd, you don't do it, okay? Uh, because the Prophet did not do so. Furqan verse 69, you're not supposed to do a madd, but you do do it, okay? So these are the exceptions that are memorized and the rule still applies everywhere else. We move on to the third exception. And this, uh, you know, in my opinion, is one of the most interesting rules of Tajweed ever. Okay, uh, this is the rule of Ishmam. The rule of Ishmam. The rule of Ishmam is that you basically show that you're pronouncing a dhamma, and you don't actually pronounce anything. So, in reality, if someone's listening to you only, he will not know that you did an Ishmam. But if he looks at you, he can see that you did an ishmam. It, is not, it does not affect what you say. It is only the, uh, your lips forming a dhamma. How do your lips form a dhamma? Ooh. But you don't make a sound. Why do we do this? Because the Prophet ﷺ did, did this. Remember the whole point of tajweed is what? To recite like the Prophet ﷺ recited. Therefore, when he did a mad, when he didn't do a mad, when he did this, when he didn't do that, every single detail has been preserved and passed down from generation to generation until it has reached us. And we know that when the Prophet ﷺ recited this particular verse which we'll mention, then he did an ishmam. What is this verse? This verse is Surah Yusuf, verse number 11. Surah Yusuf, verse number 11. Surah Yusuf is uh, Surah 12 in the Quran, verse number 11. Turn to verse number 11. Here you will find most Mus'hafs have a strange symbol here. That strange symbol is just meant to tell you do an Ishmam here. Okay. Now look at me as I do an Ishmam. There's no point looking at the Mus'haf because you have to see how an Ishmam is done. And this is what an Ishmam is. Look what I will do when I will say the word Ta'manna uh, in the Quran. قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مَا لَكَ لَا تَأْمَنَّا عَلَى يُوسُفِ تَأْمَنَّا تَأْمَنَّا It's as if I'm doing a dhamma تَأْمَنَّا But I didn't do a dhamma You just show it with your lips and you don't actually pronounce anything Now the reason this is done is in reality there is a hidden word or a hidden letter here تَأْمَنُونَا Ta'ma but it is not written. Therefore, to show the hidden word, you just pronounce your lips that way, but you don't pronounce it. The point of the Ishram, this is the only place it occurs, Surah Yusuf 11. You show your lips moving to be a dhamma, but you make no pronunciation. Ta'manna. That's it. This is the exception of Ishmam. We will continue the exceptional rules, and they are very exceptional rules, in our next episode. Until then, recite the Quran properly, strive to be in the company of the holy angels, and we'll see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.